Hey guys, this is Jun Wan from ZDNet, and today we're taking a look at the HoloKit X, the latest AR headset on the market that, get this, uses an iPhone to power it. All right, so like I mentioned before, the HoloKit X uses your iPhone's existing technologies to create this augmented reality experience. And really the benefit of connecting it to an iPhone is that you don't need to connect it to a computer or uh, hook it up to a rig, a bunch of sensors. It really is this one step process where you could just plug in your iPhone and do a bunch of fun stuff. So from a fashion perspective, you, you might not really wanna wear this headset when you're with a date or if you're trying to impress someone because it really does look a little funky, but, but, there is a reason for all of it, of course. And it's the fact that the headset itself uses stereoscopic glass. It uses a series of mirrors that basically reflect what's on your iPhone's display to your eyes. And as a result, it creates this overlay of what you see in real life alongside those graphics and virtual elements. So the headset itself has this mix of hard plastic and elastic bands, which obviously makes for not the most premium feeling headset on the market, but uh, there are some pluses to it. For example, it's much more lightweight than what you typically find on a VR or mixed reality headset. But also from a durability standpoint, if you ever drop the headset, uh, it probably won't crack, but you'll get some scratches and some scuffs. And the lightweightedness starts to make more sense when you think about the fact that there's no technology whatsoever within the headset. That's excluding the iPhone. There's only one thing which is kind of technology, I guess. Uh, it's the NFC tag. Uh, the company says it's used to basically help the HoloKit app detect what iPhone they're using so that it could basically scale out the visuals to match the display size. My biggest complaint with the headset is the fact that it only has a 60 degree field of view. I think that's a little too small, especially for these headsets. So I actually demoed the headset with a couple of coworkers as well here at ZDNet. And perhaps the biggest complaint was the fact that you could actually see where the visuals cut off. So when you're looking straight ahead, you'll actually see this transparent box and uh, typically when you're in an experience, the visuals, the graphics, the animations will basically cut off around that square. And I think that sort of takes away from the realism of these experiences. So if I were to give any feedback for the next model of this generation, it would probably be for a wider view to view. In terms of iPhone support, the headset works with anything from an iPhone 14 Pro Max to an iPhone XS, which is actually a pretty good range. I'm assuming that a lot of people probably own an iPhone within that spectrum. The company recommends using an iPhone with a LiDAR sensor, so anything from an iPhone 12 Pro and above. And that kind of makes sense because LiDAR sensors enable you to do 3D environmental perception, which measures the depth and the distance from you and the objects around. And it just allows the graphics in your experience to interact with your surroundings much more naturally. All right, so let's talk about the HoloKit app, which is the thing that powers this whole experience. The app right now is still in beta, but you can download it from TestFlight. And uh, the company says the official version will hit the App Store by the end of November. Perhaps the most impressive part about this headset is the fact that it's able to leverage nearly everything that the iPhone has to offer, as well as some of Apple's other products like the Apple Watch and AirPods. So from the iPhone, you have Apple's Vision Framework, which allows the headset to dial into hand tracking. You could uh, basically wave your arm around and the pixels and animations will interact with you. There's also motion controlling, which is a little more precise in terms of reacting to your movements. That requires an Apple Watch. And then there's, of course, spatial audio where you could pair your AirPods Pro or AirPods Max and you get that nice surround sound experience. And on top of all of this, it's using low energy Bluetooth, which is the same technology that powers AirDrop. And that's being used to connect to local channels so that you could play with other folks who have the HoloKit X or spectate someone who's playing with it using your iPhone or iPad. And this spectator mode, which is actually doing the recordings that you're seeing here, is pretty underrated. In my opinion, these headsets typically isolate the user from everybody else, but uh, with spectator mode, you're basically interacting with those around you as well. All right, so there's one thing I haven't told you guys yet, and that's the price of the headset. 
The Holokit X cost $129, which compared to the rest of the market is relatively affordable. Now, obviously, the Holokit X isn't going to enhance your productivity or be sold off to businesses or enterprise or even replace your triple monitor workstation at home. Instead, it's really just a fun, portable entertainment machine that's powered by something that's probably in your pocket right now. So what do you guys think about the Holokit X? Is this a preview of what Apple's AR VR future is going to look like? For more news and advice on the latest technology and innovations, be sure to check out ZDNet.com. I mean, I guess if you work at Hogwarts, you could use the headset for work. No?